Welcome to a video on Miller's Theorem. In this video, we will be looking at Miller's Theorem and how it basically um, works. I'm not going to go into the derivation thereof. And then how we apply it to resistors and how we apply it to capacitors. So first off, we use Miller's Theorem when we have uh, inverting gain or inverting amplifier and when we have uh, impedance sitting over our amplifier like this so typically some form of feedback or a parasitic capacitance um, if you look in terms of our common emitter amplifier how do we deal with this impedance sitting over our amplifier Okay, now the best way would be to split this impedance into one that's sitting on the input side and one that's sitting on the output side. Then it can be dealt with um, during the input analysis and dealt with here with the output analysis. So, Z1 here would be the original impedance divided by 1 minus k, where k is the gain of our amplifier. In our case, it's minus AV. So I'm just going to change this equation to be 1 plus the absolute value of AV. And that method or that way, you can never go wrong. Because if it's a negative, you have to make it a positive in any case. Okay, but Miller's theorem is based off this negative or inverting amplification and the fact that we have negative feedback. Right, the one on the output side would be Z multiplied by the gain over 1 plus the gain. So if the gain is large enough, the impedance here that we will be observing on the output will be approximately the same as that that we saw over our amplifier. Right, so for resistors, our impedance is equal to R, so basically some resistor form, and then we just make this R1 and R2, and it looks exactly the same as the original form of Miller's theorem. So the feedback resistor over here was split into two parts. Right, so if we have a resistor of 100 kilo ohm in feedback format here, the resistor 1 will be 100 kilo divided by 1 plus 100, that's for a gain of 100, and that will become 990 ohms. And the output resistor R2 here would become 99 kilo ohms and this is very close to the original 100 kilo ohms so r2 is approximately equal to to r okay so if you're dealing with approximations and not working very accurately but just looking for a, a value then an approximation like this is fine okay 100 is also a large value so this will be very close if this was a gain of 10 the difference might be quite large. A gain of 5, then this value here would be 6. So the difference will then become quite um, visible. So always remember for large gains that this can be approximated down to the original value. So typical places where we can apply this um, since we haven't dealt with feedback yet um, is in the case where we have a collector bias of a transistor this resistor will have influence on our input impedance and on our output impedance so we can apply Miller's theorem to this resistor and just split it up into two resistors so that is how we can deal with some resistance that we add. Um, 
I think I, I did mention in that video that it will have an influence on our gains and impedances on the input and output. Okay, so very typical place to use this. The one that we will be using Miller for the most would be for capacitors. So when we have a capacitor sitting over our amplifier like this, or as a parasitic inside our amplifier, we can again split it into input and output capacitor. And for this, we are gonna use a little bit of Laplace. So impedance is one over CS. And then we're gonna make the Z on the input, or Z1, one over C1S and the z that we had on the top 1 over cs and we can slowly convert this equation into c1 because the s's will cancel in the end here and here um, c1 is the capacitance multiplied by 1 plus the gain so the capacitor on the input side will have a significant increase from when it was over the amplifier like this. So you will sometimes also hear that there's a, a Miller multiplication of a capacitor or whatever. And, and this has some interesting applications, especially for uh, on-chip um, capacitors because capacitors on-chip can't be extremely large if you need to to apply a larger capacitor, you can make it bigger using this concept um, or appear to be larger. And again, with the output capacitor C2, we will see that it ends up to be 1 plus 1 over AV. And if this AV becomes extremely large, C2 will be approximately equal to C again. So if we would place this in some form of a problem, if our original capacitor is one picofarad and we have a gain of 100 volts per volt, our C1 will be 101 picofarads and C2 will be approximately one picofarad. Okay, so the one that will be used mostly is just C1 which I would call half Miller, just using one half of the, the circuit, because typically when we calculate frequencies using this, C1 will bring about the dominant pole in our equations and not C2. So the effect of C2 we can basically throw away in our calculations. It, it doesn't make a, a huge difference if we just want the approximate value. So the significant contributor will be this C1 right here. Okay, so that's the most important one to remember. And you'll also find in books that typically they will just use this half and not this half over here. So, one of the typical places where we will apply this is if we look at our transistor, we have C mu sitting in an awkward position. And we will treat that using Miller to make it a capacitor on the input and a capacitor on the output and that is assuming that Rx is so small that we can basically ignore it and then C1 and C pi will be in parallel with one another and we can just add them but if C, C1 is more dominant then we can typically ignore C pi as well. Okay, so at the end of the day, only this capacitor here might make a difference, but that is for very large values of C1. Okay, so in that case, our Z will be 1 over C mu S. 
Okay, and the gain of amplifier that we will be using is AV. So if we have extra emitter resistor, that will be part of AV. So if we decrease the gain, according to gain bandwidth product, our bandwidth will also increase. Okay, so having a emitter resistor here that's not bypassed will increase your bandwidth of your amplifier um, because it's also feedback resistor. So it's per definition part of feedback is if, when you're stabilizing the gain that your bandwidth will also increase a bit. But we will see that when we apply Miller's in a following video. Okay, then lastly, is we have the Miller capacitor. Okay, so that is when you take a capacitor and put it here between the base and the collector to create a, a cutoff frequency um, for our amplifier. So it can be used for frequency compensation. And note that in this problem, I added this a Miller capacitor and a load capacitor. Both of these will be roughly on the same frequency or just to demonstrate that for a Miller capacitor, we need a much smaller capacitor than a capacitor on the load itself. Okay, a Miller capacitor will find more dominance on the input components where a load capacitor will have more dominance based on the output components but the miller is smaller where the load capacitor is typically larger okay in the case where our miller capacitor is much greater than our cmu value we can just say that c miller is much greater than our cmu and boom this pole just becomes our miller capacitance Okay, so if this is just one picofarad CMU, 100 pico is much greater, and we can approximate our Miller capacitance of, of that. Okay, so just comparison. I added this original um, model for our high frequency here, and your Miller capacitor will be sitting that's an ugly capacitor, but we'll be sitting like this. And the moment that we ignore the effect of Rx, they will be in, in parallel over here. Okay, so in the problems that we will be doing in a later video, we will look at the Miller capacitance and how to add Miller compensation and how to add load compensation. So either one of the two and do analysis using Miller. Now Miller is mainly for our common emitter amplifiers, not for our common base and common collector amplifiers. They work a little bit different. Okay, so that's what we will be using Miller for. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video where I will do some Miller capacitance problems um, as analysis for higher frequency. So see you then. Thank you for watching.